As you can see here, I'm downloading the Update 3 version of Visual Studio 2015. I have the professional version, but you can have the community version and do the same thing. The reason that I'm upgrading Visual Studio Professional 2015 to Update 3, as of yesterday, Microsoft has updated ASP.NET Core again. They announced the new .NET Core 1.0. There's no more RC1 version or RC2 version. Now we're at the final version of .NET Core 1.0. It's very simple to implement the update associated with .NET Core. I'm not going to run through the installation of updating to the latest version. RC1 to RC2 was a huge update because we're not using the DNX runtime anymore and we're not utilizing the different commands with the DNU restore. We actually changed to the .NET CLI. So I thought it was imperative to run through that installation. But this is very simple. It's very similar to how we installed RC2. In the next lecture, I will demonstrate the differences between the project.json and the different dependencies between RC2 and the final .NET Core 1.0. There is not much differences between the two items. We keep the same .NET CLI, so we don't have to worry about all those changes associated with the command line. But as you can see right here, on docs.asp.net, it already has some basic differences between .NET Core RC2 and .NET Core 1.0. As you can see with the tools, what are different, we will go over some of the differences between these. If you want a full list of all the differences, there's links on this page for the announcements. And you can see all of the differences between RC2 and the final version. As we went through this lecture series, there has been a progression from the RC1 version to RC2 to this final version right now. And this is why we have it in stages for the installation of the different versions of ASP.NET Core. This is similar to what we did previously. What you're going to do first is install Visual Studio 2015 Update 3. Then you're going to install .NET Core for Visual Studio, the official MSI installer. And then if you don't want to develop with Visual Studio, you can always install the .NET Core SDK for Windows. This shows you how to initialize some code. One thing you want to remember is that you want to go to your control panel and you want to remove previous versions of .NET Core. So you want to come in here and you want to go to your programs and features. You want to search for RC2 SDK Preview 1 and Visual Studio 2015 Tooling Preview 1. These two are going to be removed, so I would go ahead and uninstall these dependencies right here because we're not going to use these going forward. You're going to have a different SDK now and the tooling preview associated with .NET Core 1.0. Your best bet is to go ahead and uninstall these two in your programs and features on Windows so that once you install the new preview and the new SDK there will be no confliction in your .NET CLI. So that's the way we do it on Windows. On Linux it's pretty much similar to what we did previously. We'll run these commands via the command line in Linux. We'll install the new .NET Dev Preview 2 version here. Before we do that, we want to make sure that we run this script to remove previous versions of .NET Core. So you can copy that and run that in your scripts. And the same thing for Mac as we did before. We want to update Brew, install OpenSSL, force OpenSSL, and then we can go to an installer to install the .NET Core SDK. And also you're going to want to update Yeoman. And you're also going to want to update your ASP.NET Core generator. I've demonstrated how to do this previously. I do not believe you're going to run into any issues. Because RC2 and the final version of .NET Core 1.0 are the same. There's really not much differences between the two. A few library reference differences a few references associated in your project.json and your startup.cs, but there are not major changes like there were between RC1 and RC2. If you follow the lectures associated with upgrading to RC2, you will have no problem migrating from RC2 to 1.0. In the next lectures, I will demonstrate I will demonstrate the changes in the project folder structure associated with our different versions. So in the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's look at the differences between RC2 and the final version of .NET Core 1.0.